3D printed space cameras, transparent diagnostics, light controlled graphene, and a visit to microscopy and microanalysis. That's this week on Light Matters. Hi, I'm James Lowe, and this is Light Matters for August 13th, 2014. NASA aerospace engineers are creating the first laser-based 3D printed devices that could make their way into space. Now in development is a 50 millimeter camera whose outer tube, baffles, and optical mounts are created as a single structure using additive manufacturing techniques. Its design features four pieces made of powdered aluminum and titanium. The instrument's baffling is angled in a pattern not possible with conventional approaches. A comparable camera manufactured in a traditional way requires up to 10 times as many components. The camera will fit in a CubeSat, a tiny satellite composed of individual units, and will be equipped with conventionally fabricated mirrors and glass lenses. The 3D printing technology is also being used to assemble a 35mm dual-channel telescope, comparable in size to a typical space telescope. The instruments will soon be ready for space qualification testing, according to the engineers. A new imaging technology could allow doctors to see through the entire human body, including tissues and organs. Developed by researchers at the California Institute of Technology, the technique offers new insight into the cell-by-cell -cell makeup of organisms and could lead to better imaging and diagnosis of developmental diseases. Called Perfusion Assisted Agent Release in Situ, or PARS, the new technique makes the entire organism's body clear and in 3D using confocal microscopy and other similar optical methods. Once transparency has been achieved, whether in an individual organ or the whole body, Standard microscopy techniques can be used on the thick masses of tissue to view single cells marked with fluorescent proteins. This new imaging technique has the potential to more rapidly detect cancer cells in biopsy samples and map the body's peripheral nervous system neurons. The research was published in Cell. A new way to control how graphene conducts electricity could prompt its use in a broadband light detector. A team from MIT found that changing the concentration of electrons in a graphene sheet can change the way the material responds to short, intense light pulses. If the graphene sheet starts with a low concentration of electrons, it prompts the light pulse to increase the material's electrical conductivity, according to the study. Similar to photons, electrons in graphene travel at a constant speed, which causes the conductivity to decrease when the electron temperature increases under the illumination of the laser pulse. Applying a voltage between a layer of graphene and a metallic thin film insulating layer allowed the researchers to tune the graphene's electron concentration. This work could lead to the development of new light detectors with ultrafast response times and high sensitivity across many light frequencies, from the infrared to ultraviolet. The research was published in Physical Review Letters. Managing Editor Laura Marshall spent a day last week at the Microscopy and Microanalysis 2014 meeting in Hartford, Connecticut. Here she is with a wrap-up. Thanks, James. On the technical side, two of the most fascinating lectures were on textiles analysis. The first talk of the day was an invited lecture given by Marco Leona, the scientist in charge in the Department of Scientific Research at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Leona looked back at the past 10 years of surface-enhanced Raman spectroscopy and art in archaeology. The pros of using SIRS for these applications include the technique's high resolution, non-invasiveness, and potential for coupling with microscopy. The cons, he said, are low sensitivity and fluorescence interference. He gave examples of SIRS work on organic dyes where he said most other techniques fail. SIRS has allowed Leona and his colleagues to identify colorants in dyes, paints, and glazes with reproducible results, he noted. Next, Sergei Pridoko of UCLA discussed interfaced SEM and micro Raman spectroscopy for SIRS analysis of dyes on single fibers. This technique is non-destructive and requires a much lower sample size than the traditional methods, which include LCMS or HPLCMS. He and his colleagues have used variable pressure SEM and micro-Raman spectroscopy to study textiles from Wacamalena in Peru, and they've identified wool fibers dyed with chai root and alpaca fibers dyed with cochineal. As popular as the tech talks were, the exhibition floor was bustling too. I spoke with representatives from several companies, large and small, including John Wilk of the startup Optofluidics, whose enthusiasm was infectious. He said that this was personally his first time at M&M, but that he loves it because although everybody's applications are different, they're all there for the same thing, microscopy. Optofluidics makes the NanoTweezer, a nanoparticle analysis tool that was a finalist in the 2014 PRISM Awards. Among other things, I also saw Zeiss's AeriScan detection unit in action, surface metrology and stereo microscope options from Leica Microsystems, and the VHX 5000 digital microscope from Keyence. And I ran into an old friend, Barbara Foster, of the Microscopy and Imaging Place, who summed up the M&M experience quite eloquently. 
For end users, it's especially important because all of the major companies bring their equipment here and they allow the end users to run experiments. So this is a wonderful place to really do a competitive analysis and to really see new equipment and how it can solve new problems. And now I'm back in the office cooking up the next issues of our magazines. Back to you, James. That's it for this edition of Light Matters. Email us with your questions or comments at lightmatters at photonics.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for news updates every day. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.